Welcome back, Nuggets. It's been a while since we last spoke, but it's the end of the years, and it's always nice to wind down a little during this month of festivities. I noticed a lot of new people coming in through my latest devlog, so if you're new here, my name is Lex, and about nine months ago, I decided it was time for me to learn how to program. And I did so by making a 3D bullet hell game called Wrenched. Now, I'm not new to making games by any means. I've been working in the games industry for over 14 years now, but mainly as a designer. And so programming isn't something that I have been doing quite that much. But that's not to say that I'm great at everything else. No, actually, there's one thing I'm even worse at than programming. Making characters. And some of you might think, but Lex Carly, the main protagonist of Wrenched, is looking pretty awesome. And quite frankly, I must agree. But even a broken clock shows the correct time twice a day. Carly definitely was a fluke. And even her design didn't go over one night ice, because I don't think I ever showed you this, but this is what she used to look like. And even though I liked the design when I started, it was just too complicated. The rig was too complicated, the model was too detailed, and it just started rubbing me in the wrong way. So then I decided upon a more low poly style, heavily referencing the characters from Bravely Default. And after a random evening of modeling, and I guess pure luck, a new Carly was born. And for the longest time, she had been accompanied solely by bots and a few grey cubes. Mm, oh, and a few fish. But those grey cubes obviously needed to turn into NPCs at some point. And to be honest, I have been putting this way, 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 way off. Until I had no other choice but to dive in. And so if I was going to start making NPCs, I was gonna start with the most important ones. And that's why I decided to start with the camp leader, which I'm calling Doc. And so I jumped into Photoshop and photo bashed together some characters from other designers, which are way better than me, and I came up with this old mechanic. And with this design in my back pocket, I moved over to Blender and started trying to make it work. And again, making characters is not my thing. And so here's a five minute time lapse of about four hours worth of me struggling trying to model a character.
And by the end, I realized I was totally making myself. So I switched out the handlebar mustache in favor of my own facial hair. After unwrapping and texturing, I made a simple armature and rigged him. And after I spent a ton of time weight painting and getting everything just right, I gave him some simple animations. Two different idols and one walk cycle. And with the model done, it was finally time to implement him in Unity. I really like games where NPCs walk about and seem to do their own thing, and so I knew I wanted to have them walk around. Just like my enemies, the NPCs that need to move around are NevMesh agents, Unity's built-in AI system. To use it, simply add a NavMesh agent script to your object, a collider, and make sure that your world has a baked NavMesh for your agent to move on. I then wrote a simple script which moves the NPC from waypoint to waypoint, which I can position right into the scene. And just like that, he's moving around minding his own business. Next to walking around and doing their own thing, as a player you of course also need to be able to talk to the NPCs. And so I needed to adjust my dialogue manager and dialogue scripts. I made it so that if an NPC is walking and you start talking to it, the NPC stops walking and turns towards you. And of course it continues walking when the dialogue is finished. I have been using ink as a base for my dialogue system and I've been implementing many custom features. Things like switching cameras, saving variables and loading levels and much more. And even though I wanted to keep the dialogue system simple, I did implement a new function to set the animation of the NPC. I have an NPC and that's absolutely amazing and as of yet, hold on because you never know how things are going to change. I don't hate it, but since I still hate making characters, I decided to be smart. Because once you have one NPC which has a rig, animations, a base mesh and a texture, you can simply tweak the mesh, change some things, add some things, change the texture and have a new NPC rather quickly. So that's what I did. And with minimal changes to the overall size, just by adding a jacket, a giant beard and a beanie, I very quickly had a steam captain. The old fisherman which will sail you around the sunken city. Now, Steam Captain doesn't need to walk around, so his character actually isn't a NavMesh agent. But by this time I noticed that the NPCs weren't blinking, so I made a simple script to switch out the face texture with one that's blinking. I know there are a lot of ways of doing that, but this for me right now is the easiest. Unbelievably, at this point I was actually starting to have fun making characters. What's going on? And so I decided to do the same trick again and I hopped into Blender and made a new NPC. 
And Chops was born! Since Chop is always in his food truck, I made a new animation of him leaning on his counter and gave him this spatula. At this point I realized that I perhaps should be making a little bit more drastic changes to my NPCs because I obviously also needed a female NPC. But that obviously meant that I couldn't just alter Doc's base mesh, but I had to make a whole new one. But I figured, you've done it once, you can do it again. And again, it turned out even better than expected. You might say, I actually learned a thing or two. I had always been planning on adding my wife to the game as an NPC and since she really wanted to be in the garden, I made her garden manager. And I actually gave her a little altered bot called Wobby to help her around the garden. Now this was all looking pretty darn good. NPCs walking around the camp making the whole place look lively. And that's when I realized one giant flaw. Carly was looking like crap. I had made Carly almost eight months ago and never really bothered to update her. And now standing next to these new NPCs, she looked a bit too small and actually a little too low poly. I already once redid her rig, but it still wasn't perfect and I had learned a lot from making all these new NPCs. And so, it was time to make a new Carly. Staying true to her original design, I took the newly created female base mesh and parts of her original design and forged a new, in my opinion, much better Carly. I also greatly improved her rig and even gave her actual fingers. Wow. All in all, her new model comparing it to the NPCs looked pretty darn good. But since she isn't fully animated yet, she won't be in the game just now, but soon. And while I was at it, I figured, why not go the extra mile? It has been suggested to me before, but I never really wanted to dabble into creating ragdolls myself. But I never knew that since 2019, Unity came with its very own ragdoll wizard. And using it is really as simple as dragging in your bones and pressing create. And I really couldn't help myself. Therefore, the new Carly won't have a death animation. I will just swapping her out with one of the ragdolls. Now, I could have stopped here, but I was on a roll. And since I now had the base mesh of a teen girl, I figured, why not make another NPC? A sobby sentimental teen, style and made by my very own sobby sentimental teen. I'm planning on adding a ton of more NPCs to the game and so reusing old animations, old rigs, old meshes and just adding things, changing things, changing up the textures is the easiest way for me at this point to create a super diverse cast of a lot of NPCs. And I know that it's not the best way to do it. I know that creating custom NPCs and making concept art and doing all those things will create better, more appealing characters. But at some point as a solo developer, you need to make some sacrifices. And that's all that I have for you today, Nuggets. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you might as well hit that subscribe button as it really helps the channel out and helps make Wrench the best game possible. And if you would like to chat after hours, we also have a Discord server, which you can join through the link in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.